Welcome to the Success Pick and Mix podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Raby, a professional pick and mixer. I'm a personal brand coach, a speaker, an actor, a creator, and a podcaster. I'm on a mission to help you find and create your version of success, your pick and mix of life and business on your terms, a blend that complements your personality, your goals, and your circumstances. Since 2018, I've been sharing interviews and mini episodes to help you unlock your next step, to make it real and make it happen. Round here, we dream big. We go for the ideal version. We talk about money and make moves our future selves would be proud of. This podcast is free and available for you whenever you need it. So do rate, review and subscribe for new episodes. If you want to go deeper with my support, check out my freebies house and unlock the rooms you choose. NikkiRaby.com forward slash freebies house. I also have workshops, programs and one-on-one bespoke offerings. For prices and availability, go to NikkiRaby.com. Thank you, as always, for spending some time with me and my guests. Now, on to today's episode. In today's episode, I'm talking to Anna Hardy, who is a family photographer and the co-creator of The Mothership, an online membership community for working mothers. She's the proud mum to two lively boys, 12 and 3, and lives in sunny Manchester. This is a really juicy episode. We talk all things about being a personal brand, putting yourself out there, launching a business, creating boundaries. There's so much good value in here. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, Anna. How are you doing? Hi, Nikki. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. So, if people don't know you or haven't found you on the on, in the online world, tell me a little bit about what you do and about your various businesses. Okay, so I am um, a photographer. Um, I have been doing that for 10 years. So um, that's just me in the business. So I've been sort of self-employed for 10 years. Um, primarily, to begin with, I was a wedding photographer. But over the last five years, I've really... Um, I, I, the, the family photography side of the business has really grown. And that's been what I found my real passion is. So actually, a year ago, I stopped taking wedding bookings. And I'm now fully focused on family photography. So I still have actually three more weddings to shoot, which we're already booked in. Oh, yeah, um, the wedding world is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, what are you doing in 2022? And you think, I, uh, I'm not sure. Do you know what? That's not even a joke. I've got some photographer friends who've been getting um, 2021. In fact, I think one did get a 2022 inquiry wow. um, last week. Yeah, I know it's nuts, isn't it? But, but is it uh, from someone who's like, I haven't met him yet, but yeah. I know he's just round the corner. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just being it. prepared. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> oh no, it's um, no. I mean, it's rare to get them. Uh, what's that? So I guess four years now. It's rare to get them that, but I have had ones book three years in advance before. but equally I've had some people book you literally like two weeks before so it does vary but yeah by I would say it's fairly normal to be booked you know for them to book you a year or two ahead so it's a, it's a bit crazy really there's there aren't I can't really think of any other jobs really where you have your sort of future in the diary two years in advance and and it's not you can't change it either obviously you know if something crops up you can't cancel you can't let people down when it's their wedding so you know I've had things like where my friends have been getting married and I've not been able to go to their wedding so I've already been booked for someone else's and there's just nothing you can do you just have to take it on the chin so it's kind of um yeah but then the obviously the flip side of that which is really good is that particularly for a self-employed person where your income's not predictable um with wedding photography it is so you know that's that's a really kind of good flip side to it and how have you found that move into um, in much more into family photography? Was it that you were just looking for that direction or is that what people were asking you for or was it just a passion from you? Um, it was a bit of both. It, it was the, <clears throat> excuse me, wedding, wedding, I think it started off that my wedding clients would then have a baby, you know, and would say, oh, do you do, you know, and it, it was more sort of, them asking me but equally I had the whole thing that had made me kind of start 
the photography business in the first place. I started that just after my eldest son was born, Joe, who so he's nearly 13 now. He'll be 13 next month, which is Whoa. really actually just in about five weeks time I know which is nuts so but I set up the business when he was about two and I was already hooked on taking pictures of him so I've always loved taking pictures of children um but then it kind of just grew from people asking but then me realizing that actually that's what I really really loved and I kept finding at weddings I I was always drawn to the kids like I know a lot of other wedding photographers kind of avoid the kids or they find them Yes. You know, don't necessarily, they find them awkward to photograph or, I don't know, annoying. Yeah. Or I don't, but I'm like, I'm reading that book to Oscar at the moment, Um, what's it called, Willie Goes to the Wedding or something, and basically oh, Willie's <laughs> sister's getting married and he takes his tortoise and his dog and his budgie and all the things. So um, okay. Yeah, but that's why they're great. Like, you know, it's kind of, a, I'd much rather well what you've got someone either sort of you know hobnobbing with a glass of champagne like that's not very interesting to photograph whereas you know someone with his I don't know what was it dinosaur and, you know <laughs> building some kind of underwater city in the uh, ornamental pond is, is is much more interesting but like um yeah so I kind of found that I was really drawn to the to photographing the children at weddings and realized that because I just find them so much they're so much more they're fun they're uninhibited they're, there's always something you know they're creating their own little adventure um, and then I actually found that people started booking me for weddings because of my pictures of kids at weddings you know they're either because they had children themselves or perhaps they had you know nieces or nephews who were, they were very close to and it was really important to them to get good pictures of them and they would say oh we just love your pictures of kids at weddings and that started to become the thing and the other wedding photographers would comment on they'd say oh you know I don't really ever think to photograph those kids but you do so I started realizing that was kind of like my thing yes and then that so it sort of grew quite organically and then yeah so I've um but I just love it I absolutely love children and I love photographing them um and yeah so it kind of just just grew that way really so yeah so I've been, you know, your so, other ventures your other business ventures as well because you've got yeah. lots of strings to your bow which is brilliant <laughs> <laughs> I've probably got too many <laughs> just like um but no I've no I've, there's two main that, I mean obviously I do the photography which I've been doing for 10 years but then my other business is um I've just started it's brand new it's really exciting um well I'm really excited about it um which has just started this month um so I've partnered up with um Helen who is um who she runs Guilty Mothers Club um she's ace and um we kind of met we just met sort of so I think it might have been one of these we were actually discussing this the other day. We can't quite fully remember how we actually did start talking to each other. But I think it was through social media. I think she might have dropped me a message. I don't know, either Instagram or something similar. But we ended up realising our, our youngest two, my little boy, Huey, and her little girl, Hetty, are the same age. So we kind of said, oh, let's go to the park with the kids um, and chat. And... And just as a social thing, really. But we just, you know, when you instantly just really, really get on with someone. Yeah. And it was like a, yeah, I just, I love her company. I always, she's one of these people you just feel really good after you've been with her. You know, she's, she's just, she's ace. And um, so we just started seeing each other as friends to begin with. But then as friends do, you chat about things you're interested in and things you're passionate about. And we realised that we both had a real kind of, Cross, we, we were both really passionate about supporting working mums particularly I, I've i been mentoring as part of um obviously as, as being a photographer I, a lot of my work is taking photos but I also do a lot of um, mentoring other photographers so um I'll do kind of like one-to-one -one mentoring um if they want some support you know how to go the business and I also run um workshops on family photography um teaching other photographers um all about kind of running a family photography business so and I'd found that a lot of the concerns that I was hearing from people that I was mentoring you know all around kind of like building your own business and make getting the balance right well this elusive balance that no one has yeah. <laughs> or ever will do <laughs> you know but um it's that's it was all kind of 
those things kept getting raised. So I was feeling like I was, and because I knew that I was wanting to stop shooting weddings and I was kind of thinking about, well, what will replace it? Uh, you know in addition to family photography and I was thinking actually um sort of creative business mentoring something that I'd be really interested in doing because I kind of was already doing it with photographers but a lot of the things that I was supporting them with were kind of applicable to any business you know or to sort of branding and marketing and you know balance and, and all the rest of it so we sort of got talking about that and I was saying you know I, I particularly feel that the, that with mums you know you just have this kind of double workload a lot of the time and and particularly sort of running your own business alongside being a mum has its own particular set of challenges and it and obviously she was already I mean she's this huge sort of cheerleader for women she had already been running lots of things around supporting women back into the workplace after maternity leave and helping them to um sort of figure out if they wanted a change of direction working out what that is and mm -hmm. so we just found that there was a lot of crossover and the more we got chatting the more we started realizing that we're both really passionate about the same things and that we might be able to sort of join forces with it so after months of chin wagging basically and then <laughs> we had lots of coffee yeah yeah um we kind of I think maybe in it's probably just before the summer sort of the spring we started formulating really specific ideas about what we wanted to do and that's when we came up with the idea for the mothership which is what we've actually just just launched <laughs> I always say launch and we're like, <laughs> a bit of a pun I enjoy saying the mothership is launched it's a bit oh, cheesy oh, oh. but I know it's launched but <laughs> so NASA and um, they've been a fantastic sponsor <laughs> They had, do you know what? I, Helen had to stop me. I was getting carried away with it. I was like, well, we can call this the, you know, she was like, well, what do we call this area of the website? I'm like, the flight deck. The flight deck. And she's like, no, just stop it. Stop I it with the shit. too many 90s game shows with puns and things like that that you're like, oh, no, I need to stop this. I need to stop it now. I know. I was like, what about the bridge? The bridge. She's like, no, just stop. Just stop. I will stop working with you. I think <laughs> but, that's um, so interesting what you say about, um, you know, personal branding and kind of t making your skills and your talents into a business. Because I find this a lot with clients and, and just conversations online is that we all have our skills that we've learned and honed and have experience with over the years. But nobody really teaches you how to do it as a business and not yeah. only on a practical level of like setting things up and what you need to do. I mean, you know, I went to drama school years ago and thank goodness we actually had a tax talk because otherwise yeah. I wouldn't yeah. have done that because I was one of the first self-employed people in my family. I certainly was the first actor. So, you know, there was a whole different ball game. But then yeah. also the mindset stuff of, am I good enough? Can yeah. I actually sell this? What do I charge? Are yeah. people going to think that I'm a bit of a a wally to thinking that I can actually make a business um, from yeah. this? Um, so uh, have you found that a lot in terms of the mindset as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, oh, it's interesting, we are talking recently about this. Um, I think women particularly, I think we get this kind of um, imposter syndrome really easily anyway. Um, you know, even if we are completely capable of something, I think, and it, I don't, it's possibly a generalisation, I'm sure some women don't get it, and I'm sure some men do, but I do think it's something that's a lot more typical of women. Mm. I think we kind of feel like we're sort of bluffing our way through things or that, you know, people are going to find out that we don't really know what we're doing with it, when actually we do. You know, it's just you kind of have, and particularly if it's something that you've, that you've not necessarily trained in, that you might have, you've got that. So, for example, I, I did no training in photography whatsoever. I was I did an English literature degree and I used to be a secondary school teacher teaching English. So it's kind of not photography. Was, I didn't even pick up a camera till I was 23, you know. Yeah. So I think I, and, and I know that a lot of business owners are the same. Of, of all the photographers that I know, I mean, I reckon probably like 10, 20 percent trained in it and I'm sure it's the same with other businesses as well you know you get a small contingent who've actually trained in that but a lot of people have just discovered along the way that they happen to be good at it or that they enjoy it or, or both and so I think that 
often what then comes with that is this feeling of like you've sort of you shouldn't really be doing it or that you don't really know what you're doing when you do it's just you come at it from a a less traditional route and I think that in in addition to that like you said before running your own business I mean you it's not just one job is it it's like it's it's the job that you're doing like on the outside like, like photographer or actor or whatever that is but also you're a marketer you're an admin clerk you're you know an accountant you're yeah you're a full-time cheerleader to yourself going come yeah. on you can do it just send the email it'll be fine <laughs> It's sort of like you've got like about 20 different hats that you're just constant, you know, stock take, you know, it's all sort of, yeah. it's, it's, it's just, you do everything and it, it's very, and I think, yeah, you, it, it can be a real whirlwind and obviously some of those you're going to be better at than others um, and it's hard trying to kind of figure out what you need to be focusing your energy on and it, what's the best way to do it. There's so much trial and error um and but I think that I mean that's obviously very particular to self-employed women but what um I think it, when you said about sort of it's about having particular sort of skills and mindset as well I think that's a really good point because and that's true of any women whether well women or men whether they're self-employed or employed that a lot of the limitations that you end up encountering can be around your mindset and your confidence and feeling you know am I able to do this am I on top of this am I good enough to do this can I can I convince other people that this is right you know it's it's all those kind of skills like so yeah you do need to learn the sort of practical you know how do I use Facebook or how do I you know keep my accounts and all the rest of it but it's also about you know how can I keep myself motivated how can I build my confidence how can I sort of sell what I do to people without feeling you want to vomit a bit yeah it's horrible I mean most people I know hate selling and selling yourself you know it's one thing selling I find selling something that isn't something that I've made would be difficult enough just selling in itself but selling something that you've created it's just really hard you know it's hard uh, so there's all sorts of things and I mean that's what sorry to kind of come back because you were asking about the mothership which I just realized I hadn't even clearly explained what it was I've just (laughs) got some random uh, spaceship kind of references (laughs) not actually explained it it's um it's an online community for working mothers so it's and that was what what we ended up feeling there was a kind of gap for there were lots of online memberships for self-employed mums or women um but not necessarily and and lots of but not ones that were actually just for all or in fact I don't think even for self-employed mums there are lots of kind of self-employed women there are lots of ones championing women but we didn't you know we felt that there was a real need for something for working mothers and initially we we're going to make it just for self-employed mothers because we felt there were so many challenges around that but actually the more we got talking it's exactly what you said about often the challenges aren't necessarily these specific sort of business related things because you know ostensibly you know yeah learning to do your accounts or learning to post an advert or you know design it it's you know yeah you can learn that and there were lots of there are lots of amazing places online that you can learn that but we felt that a lot of the things that maybe would have the sort of skills and development that would have more longevity is it longevity or longevity I don't know longevity yeah I don't know why I gave it a little French accent then longevity (laughs) <laughs> oh, the ones that have the longevity. There's um, things like and these transferable skills that actually might be helpful in their personal lives as well. So things like confidence building, um, you know, sort of negotiating, mindfulness, um, you know, goal setting, all these kind of things that actually will help you in your business, but they will also help you, you know, in life anyway and and to sort of have that confidence to push through with what you want to do so the mothership is basically a a community and we feel as well you know today people used to sort of live near to all their family and friends whereas we're all spread out now and there are so many working mothers who don't have I mean I I don't have any family you know my both my parents are over two hours away you know my brother's an hour away but he's you know and a lot of 
people are the same. They don't necessarily have that kind of support network and that village. So we wanted to it to be really like a village for working mothers where we can all kind of and there's so there's like a skill swap form where you can there's like group problem solving skill swap forum goals labs each month there's an online place where they can all chat um, and then there's like monthly development that's around personal quality you know personal sort of strengths and skills rather than sort of nuts and bolts of running a business um, and then there's just kind of fun stuff as well to help out you know recipes because we all end up cooking the same <laughs> three <laughs> meals things that i'm like oh say it again yeah. then <laughs> exactly so you know things like that and interviews with other working mothers and things like that. so it's sort of a bit like describe it a bit like a a sort of cooperative workspace come coffee shop magazine for working mothers so where everyone can just kind of help each other out really and hopefully ease the load a bit um but yeah it's just it's just a there's so many things that you can't you could be sort of working on at any one time aren't there and it could be quite overwhelming so I think you know it's all hopefully it's just trying to simplify things and just focus on you know what you can do and one thing at a time and just you know developing those qualities that are going to help you to sort of tackle everything else rather than adding a hundred things to your to-do list sort of maybe learn better how to prioritize do you know what I mean that's going to help you longer rather than actually making a list of 25 tasks to do that you're never going to get the time to do I think I think that's an interesting point because I know like myself I do acting coaching writing speaking and I have have a mum as well and Mm. one thing that I find is sometimes it can be well, it, it swings and roundabouts. Sometimes the work that I get um, over several months, for example, um, like the, like January that's gone by, it's been a really heavy month coaching-wise. I've had loads of one-to-one clients. I've done some workshops and things like that. And the acting side has been quite slow because January generally is in terms of the acting industry. I think a lot of the casting directors are still sleeping off Christmas. Like, <laughs> I think that was quite yeah. a, that was that was a heavy one. Um, no, I'm sure they're they're doing pilot season. They're doing clever things. Um, but uh, one thing that I'm really aware of is that just because the opportunities are not coming to me in January, for example, I still need to be actively growing those things. And yeah. I think sometimes when we talk about the juggle, it can be that like, are you seeing your kids or are you growing your business? But how do you focus on all the different areas of your income streams, I guess, to make sure they're flourishing and, and growing as you want them to? Well, um, probably not as capably as I should be, is the, honest, the really honest answer. Um, I think that exactly like you've said, there are different times of the year, different different points. Certain things take a front seat, and certain things take a back seat. Um, I think the key is planning ahead, which is something that I've only really done, if I'm being honest, in the last year or so. Um, I've I've always run my business in quite a reactive way, which isn't the best way to do it. And I think I've been lucky in that I've been able to do that. I've I've kind of not, the business has come in. I've always had enough just coming in and I've tended to operate it in a case of, oh, let's just see what happens, see what comes in. And luckily enough has come in, but it's not, you can't really grow your business that way. It's not sustainable. And also it's not a very relaxing way to, you know, it's not, you're kind of, never being quite sure what's around the corner or putting plans in place you know it's just not a wise way to do it and so if you've got kids as well I think sometimes I find um you know the online forum situations that I found sometimes of women in business is that sometimes it is people who you know and this is not necessarily about mums but also don't necessarily have other commitments they may not have elderly parents to look after or you know people that need them so it's kind of you know sometimes I read those things of like uh, I haven't really done anything today I wasn't in the mood or I wasn't feeling it and whereas (laughs) I'm like I've got an hour what can I I do let's go yeah absolutely and I think yeah it's it's an it's worth 
sort of trying to map out over the year, well, when are going to be, like, there are certain going to be I, certain times of the year I know that I'm going to get a lot of family work booked in. So, for example, there's always a big rush before Christmas because people want family pictures to use for Christmas presents. Yeah. You know, so I know that autumn and winter is always going to be busy. Similarly, people kind of love, you know, around sort of spring, sort of summer, because it's sort of Mother's Day, Father's Day, and, you know, all the blossoms out and everyone goes, and everyone's sort of defrosting after the winter. Quick, <laughs> let's spring. all get matching outfits immediately. Let's <laughs> bring around in the daffodils, like, we <laughs> joyously. So, yeah, everyone's kind of, like, coming back to life. And so I, I kind of know that those are hotspots. So... The key is to sort of prepare for that and to know when your um, low spots are as well. Because like you say, there are similarly parts of the year when you know business is going to be very slow. But I mean, I think with in terms of and this is what I'm sort of trying to set up at the moment. I think I've always sort of marketed for specific products or events before you know like oh I've got this coming up so I'm going to try and push that now Mm -hmm. whereas actually really what you should be doing which is what I'm trying to sort of now get a a much better system for is marketing all year round so it's like a kind of steady drip you're keeping everyone aware of it so you know sort of email marketing keep letting people know what you're doing so that you're not just sort of springing up out of the blue you know one week going hi you know, please buy this, <laughs> you know, when people are sort of like, well, who's this? Who, and then she? sending it and then not having a response and then going, oh, no, I'm terrible. I'm so bad at what I do. And it's not yeah. it's just people have to, it's that consistent flow, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. So I think sort of I'm disgracefully late to the party setting up an email newsletter. I know this is something that, you know, this is the thing I kind of, I can advise other people. I know what I should be doing, but then I've not ended up doing half of it. But I think because you just, well, you just get distracted with other things. I mean, it's not that I'm sitting twiddling my thumbs. There's always just things I think, well, I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. But I think planning is the key. And actually, I've not been very good at prioritising before. I've probably spent time doing things that I would have been better spending the newsletter. You know, for example, spending a a lot of time making a marketing campaign for a specific thing when actually looking long term, I'd have been better off setting up the newsletters to me you know it, it's yeah. sort of, it's looking long term playing the long game rather than just sort of okay what's coming up in the next month so I think and build it and also building that community people have to sort of know you and trust you before they'll want to work with you you know if you just kind of ping up out of nowhere going hey buy this they're just you know some might but a lot won't whereas if they've grown to sort of know and like and trust you then when you do bring something new to the table they're much more likely to want to get involved with it so I think that's what I've sort of learned in terms of managing the ups and downs is to try and be a little bit more consistent and you know and don't yeah, just know that they will come. Don't panic when it's quiet, but just spend the time put, putting irons in the fire, basically. Yeah. You know, put put irons in the fire. It's you, it's easy to look at what you need to do this week and this month. And, of course, you need to take care of that. But it, playing the long game and thinking, well, how can I put some irons in the fire that are going to serve me well in six months' time or a year's time when things might be quiet or when I'm going to need people listening, you know, let's sort of start it now. So true. I would love to talk about something you touched on, which is about negotiating and boundaries, because I guess when you started your photography business, it wasn't that thing you had. um, I don't know. We may have done. But like, have you made mistakes over time where you're like, oh, no, I totally should have asked for that in the first email or I wish that um, I'd put that clause in place? Um. I yeah. know it's something that my clients find really difficult in sort of mm. asking for what they want and also yeah. having being able to anticipate what they might need further down the line. How yeah. has that process been for you? Well, um, I mean, I think it, to a certain extent, you just it's impossible to know all the eventuali- yeah. eventualities of how things are going to turn out. And I think don't definitely don't beat yourself up if you forget to put something in. And I mean that happens. It still happens now. So like you just you know something will happen. You think ah oh, that's because I didn't make that clear, or that's because mm. I didn't 
or you know you realize you forgot to charge for mileage and then it's like well I could but now it's not really fair to come back to them and say oh by the way it's gonna you know so you just have to suck it up and pay for it yourself so I find the what I've always done with things like that if I realize whenever I think oh that didn't go quite how I wanted or needed it to I think well what what did I do or what didn't I do that made that happen? You know, did I need another clause in my contract? Did I, you know, so for example, um, I've not long ago added in one around retouching pictures because I've actually, I think my clients, because I've got quite a natural style of photography, I don't tend to really get people who want loads of retouching. Yeah. Um, and, um, so I, I've never really written anything about it, you know, um, I, I, whereas I th- actually, do you know, what? it wasn't even me. It happened to a friend. They ended up with a really tricky thing where a client just wanted them to like basically change their appearance <laughs> pretty much, you know, and um, that's not what she does. You know, she takes photographs. She's not a, a retoucher. And also sort of ethically don't really want to change. You know, people should don't want to change what they look like they look lovely as they are do you know what I mean sometimes people I've had that with headshots where people Mm -hmm. I've got them back and I'm like I don't really know who that is and you know I only have to show it to my mum and she's like no because she's because she wants to see me not that my mum's a pushy mother at 36 by any means but it is weird if if pictures actually don't look like you yeah exactly I mean I'll get rid of zits and stuff or like you know so everyone if it's something that's like a temporary thing that's not part of that person you know then yeah of course you know I'll I'll get rid of that no problem but I'm not going to actually change what what they look like but I think some people do want that and it made me think and this this friend of mine she had a real palaver sort of negotiating that so now I've kind of made sure okay well I'm going to avoid the potential of that happening by making sure it's in the terms and conditions you know what I do and don't do and similarly when I've come a cropper with um, I've maybe forgot to charge them for mileage or I've forgotten this and I mean there's a million different things I'm trying to give examples but I can't really think of any but there, there are, are loads I'm constantly tweaking my terms and conditions on the booking form because something will happen and I think oh yeah I could have avoided that if that had been in place or you know if I'd asked this, this question on the booking form or if I'd done it in that order or so I'm constantly constantly tweaking but what I will always do is just it always follow like the customer's always right if I've forgotten something and it means that I've missed out on 50 quid well it's just tough you know I'm not gonna I'd rather the clients be happy but I just think right no next time I can't do that again so you know um I constantly tweak according to things not going quite how yeah and sometimes you think you've got it nailed and then something <laughs> random just happens like motherhood <laughs> yeah exactly so it's I definitely don't feel bad when those things happen they happen all the time and I'm constantly constantly tweaking my brochures tweaking my booking forms tweaking my terms and conditions to cover you know to make sure that things that have previously gone not quite how I wanted them to um don't again you know so um, you learn that stuff, don't you, from actually doing it. And I think that sometimes when people are getting ready to launch, um, whatever it might be, they're waiting for that perfect time when everything is aligned. Oh, yeah, it's actually, it's, 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 you're never going to feel like everything is perfect. You have to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, family photography, I've been doing family photography for five years now and I'm still tweaking things, you know, because I feel like I've got it all pretty finely tuned now the process but every now and then something will happen that's just like a random and I'm like oh you know I didn't see that one coming okay right well I'll change that and then that won't happen again you know so I mean none of them are disastrous but you know just little things where you think right no I could make I could make that better or that wasn't quite what I wanted to happen and you know or and around managing expectations as well and I think yeah it's definitely you're never ever going to get it right from the start and you asked about in terms of sort of being firm with things and negotiating well Mm. I think that's a real uh, starting your own business I just think it's I mean it's just a confidence thing isn't it everyone I know um to begin with just bends over backwards and doesn't feels like they can't negotiate they can't insist they get let people haggle them down you know because because you're just so desperate for people to want what you're doing and to buy what you're doing that you just kind of let them 
tell you what you're going to offer them you know and I started off like that definitely but what I've really really found and everyone else I know who's kind of had the same journey says the same that actually you you're you get messed around so much more and treated worse when you do that than when you affirm and you say no and you stick to your guns um I think you kind of feel like you're doing it to please them but actually it has the opposite effect and people don't respect what you do you know so the more you kind of go oh well okay well I'll I'll not charge that price I'll charge that price because that's what you've asked for and I'll not do it in this way I'll change what I do in this way because you wanted it a bit like that and honestly these often it's these people who you end up with the most hassle with or they're not they're still not happy you know it's kind (laughs) of because and I think it's the more you can kind of say okay this is what I do this is how I do it this is I know that you know this is how I work it's fine if you don't want that if that's not your thing that's no problem but this is what I do do you want it or not? You know, and ultimately, yeah. it's not enough. But if you do you want, want it or not, babe? <laughs> yeah, that's that's like on the first page of my brochure. That's <laughs> Show right. me the money. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's that kind of thing of it's fine. There isn't only one right way to do things. There are a million different ways to million different types of photographer, there are a million different kinds of acting, there are a million different kinds of shops, there are a million different kinds of coach, you know, there's everything. There's not one right or wrong way to do it, but knowing how you want to do it, how what feels right for you, and then attracting like-minded people who want that same thing, mm-hmm. you know, that that's what it's all about. And the less clear you are on what you offer, the more people will be confused about what you offer and you'll attract people who aren't actually after the same thing as you and there's a mismatch of expectations a mismatch of you know of priorities and ultimately you and they are going to end up dissatisfied you'll get much more satisfied customers when you know who you are what you offer what's important to you what's not important to you you then design your business around that and you stick to it and then the people who you work with will be on board. They get that, and they feel in safe hands. Yeah. You know, someone kind of personal often as well. Yeah. I think sometimes if you get a no, like mm-hmm. I, I actually, you know, be honest, like I always am on the podcast. I had a, an email yesterday from a lady who said, "I can't afford you," and um, immediately, of course, you go, oh, "Well, let yeah. me see if I could do because we're pleasers yeah. and nurturers. Let me see if I can give you a discount." You know, that's what I thought yeah. in my head. But yeah. I thought, okay, that and that's fine. And she said, I yeah. will come back to you. And I thought it it's sometimes just having that moment to take a step back and remember what it is you're doing for, for mm-hmm. somebody. And one thing that I found is when I, and now I don't do free work, but when I used to in the beginning when I was launching my coaching business, sometimes you would give the moon on a stick to somebody and because they weren't paying for it, they didn't value it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's weird. You kind of, it sort of works the opposite way that your gut is telling you it does. <laughs> you know, it really, really does. You know, I, I have, since I've been, since my prices have been higher and my and I don't negotiate anymore on price um and since I've felt more confident in what I offer and I know the value in what I offer and I don't feel like you know I know I'm not fleecing anyone I know it's worth what I'm ch- you know when yeah. you kind of get to that point you think no actually this is reasonable and it's worth it and I'm passionate about it and I know I'm going to do a really great job for you and this will totally be worth it you the clients that you get so you know they they feel that too they're appreciative they they're happy to take your lead with things they trust you they feel safe with you they know they're in safe hands whereas you know in the early days when you're kind of like oh well okay I'll I'll knock that off and I'll do this and I'll change it's sort of like you know if you imagine walking into a shop and going oh how much is that and then telling you a price and you're going oh and then they oh well all right we'll tell you what I'll give you for half but immediately that shot will have kind of gone down in that you know what I mean you think well what why was it that in the first place then I'd be thinking well what were you why was why are you just knocking half off now then is it not worth that is it you know 
why it's it could it, work yet when it's you doing it you feel like you're helping them and you're yeah. being sustainable but actually all you're doing is just kind of like destabilizing and devaluing what you're offering it's really hard though because you just so you really want the business you need the business you're desperate for people to like and buy what you're doing it's really hard but the firmer you can be and it's not just about being firm, but actually just about knowing that what you're offering is worth it yeah. and getting that confidence of and taking the time to make sure, you know, I, I make sure that the products that I offer, I know they're really good quality. I know I use the best suppliers. I know how much time and care I spend on, you know, the part of the process. So if you just make sure that what you know that what you're offering is good, then you can say with confidence, no, this is this is going to be worth it. You know, this is worth it. And I'm passionate about it. And your passion and enthusiasm will show what they'll pick up on that. They'll appreciate that. Yeah, and negotiation doesn't always have to be about money as well. I think it's that thing, you know, yeah. for example, if I went to have a, a beauty treatment, not that I do particularly um, very <laughs> often, but it's those kind of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be about price for me. But if somebody's going to throw in, you know, a nice robe and a sit down at the end of it or, yeah, you know, exactly. a nice cup of tea or whatever it might be, those are the kind of added bonuses. So I think that's one yeah. thing that you can think about in your business yeah. of, of, of how you can bring value, not just yeah. decrease the value, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if someone, the most that I will do now, if someone's really kind of intent on, you know, sort of hey or I mean I don't I, I won't give things just because people you know but if if there's something that you think okay well no I'm willing to bend on it yeah then I'll give it you know it's like well what what could I give them that will just make it a that bit more special I'm not going to reduce how what things cost you know but if it's sort of you you can make people feel special by giving them extras and actually I tend to not really do it with like if people just inquire out the blue, because I just think, well, it's not fair on everyone else who's paid for. You know, I'm not going to sort of nigger. That's how I see it as well. I think that's a good way to see it if you're feeling like, oh, but I should be offering discounts because you're more thinking about how you feel. I try and think about it from my client's point of view, that, well, if what of all the people who've paid full price, it's not unfair on them to start mm -hmm. just randomly giving people discounts just because they've asked, you know, so... But what I do do is I give extras to like returning clients or if people refer me. So it's like a thank you. So, you know, if they've referred their friend or if they've come back to me for another shoot, then I make sure I give them extra. Brilliant. So they get more, you know, and it's it's a way of thanking them. You can show that you appreciate it and that you're happy to sort of bend, but not sort of just indiscriminately just because someone's just demanded it randomly out of the blue <laughs> kind of a rupa salt moment yeah exactly and and you know the people who i really want to give extra to the people who are you know you sort of bat and who've been you know it's, they're they're your tribe they're your you know that's i think it's worth spend your time working out how you can please your tribe rather than just random inquiries you know that's oh, that's, you, that's, that's a really good point because i think sometimes we can focus on the new and actually just take care of the people who do get you or do understand your your value and and, and help yeah. those because it always comes back around um i just wanted to do a few quick fire questions with you just to finish sure. off which is what is the best thing about your life and business lifestyle situation oh um well flexibility definitely you know um the the, the fact that i can kind of i have a, a not total control so obviously i've got things booked in you know that but I've got control over what I book in when and on a day when I've perhaps not got specific bookings I can choose how I want to structure the day and what order I want to do things in and you know you can I'm, I'm saying oh you can take a day off if you need but I was trying to think the last time I had a day off and I just can't, can't remember but yeah it's um definitely flexibility and being able to I would I think I would really struggle in the times when I feel like I sometimes I think oh god it'd be so nice to be employed again just with like the regular in, you know predictable yeah. income and I do have times like that but then I just think I don't actually think I can do it now I don't think I could go back to being told where when I need to be and where I need to be and when 
and I find it so slow as well. <laughs> it's terrible. Mm. I've done a few um, gigs for companies, uh, gigs, not like rock and roll stuff, but like, um, you know, speaking <laughs> gigs and things like that. Mm. And sometimes just to get a form signed, you know, when you're like, come on, guys, you can just yeah. sign this form. Like, it's, it's <laughs> going to be fine. Like, I just need your signature. And, you know, yeah. even those things like that. Whereas I think when we have our own creative businesses, I come up with something, I implement it, I pull it together, I get people yeah. on board that I need, and it's a bit go, go, go. So that's, yeah. that's really good. Um, Definitely. And variety, sorry, as well, like flexibility and variety. I love, you know, that you can kind of, I can be, have like alone time in front of the computer, just squirreling away, you know, work if I feel like I just want to kind of hunker down and do that, but then you can be out me too. You know, it's, yeah, variety and flexibility, I think. And yeah. what tools or resources have really helped you to um, accelerate your business? Um, well, I would definitely say goal setting, which is, as like I said, I've only really started doing in the last year. And I've noticed there's a massive, massive difference. Um, taking time each quarter, each month and at the start of each week and day, you know, to the last, to work out what what am I working towards right now not annual ones because they're too it's too long it's yeah, too the five-year plan is way too scary oh it's just like well who I mean god I don't I've no idea what I'd be doing <laughs> five years like a, you know it's pointless even trying to guess really yeah. I think I mean okay it's good to have like a so you know you might have a dream of where you want to be then but chances are by the time you get there it'll be something different anyway you'll have you know think what how much how many changes have happened over the last five years there's going to be just that same or more changes again you know it's so I think yeah sort of three months <laughs> quarterly thinking what do I want to achieve now in this next three months and then breaking that down and then you know doing that on like a monthly weekly daily um definitely has really really helped so sort of and and actually the other tool which sounds like a silly one and it's very unenvironmentally friendly so I'm really sorry about this is putting tasks on post-it notes ah. instead of on the list. Um, actually, it's Helen from Guilty Mother, who I've partners up with. She's she's like organisation queen. She's amazing. And she was the one who put me onto this. And it's been a, like a game changer because I always used to have like a million lists and these lists that you never end up crossing everything off. And, you know, the things that you did put at the top then become towards the bottom or that's not and you you constantly like I used to number them then like in order of priority and then your priorities change so you scribble it out and then you have to write a new list and blah 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 and it's whereas now each task each individual task goes on a separate post-it and I have like a like a sheet of paper on the wall that and you can reorder them really easily you know when you kind of if you put anything priorities change yeah and there's no you know it's satisfying like crossing something off a list but scrunching up a post and don't chuck it in the bin oh. <laughs> again sorry environment recycle sorry i said chuck it in the bin chuck it in the recycling yes whilst you're knitting <laughs> your own yoga pot is really really satisfying and it's it just feels a lot clearer seeing what you need to do and when and i i now have like half of the board the left hand side is all post-its of tasks that need to be done this month and then other ones that are like not urgent for this month to go on the other side whereas if they were all on the same list it looks really overwhelming like oh I've got all these things whereas actually I can just kind of look on the left hand side and see them and pull them off each day the ones that I want to tackle and then you can chuck them in the bin when they're done so yes. yeah oh I've got loads of post-it notes oh, it's in the cupboard actually so I'm going to try that that sounds yeah, great it um, is. have there been any books that have just changed your life a little bit um, for work or fun or kind of um, um... probably stuff uh, well either actually they're they're always good because I, I think sometimes um well this has been something I, that's really helped me is looking outside my industry because if I look too mm. much at other coaches or other actors you can kind of get stuck and what you can do is end up sort of trying to replicate what's going on whereas if you look at other things going on it's, it's mm. been really helpful so so either really well definitely a book that's made a really big difference to how well I feel I can kind of plan work and feel on top of things is The One Thing by Gary Keller um, and we actually it was our first in the mothership we have a book club each month where there's like one 
for workbook and one for fun book and we chose the one thing as our first work one for the book club because it's the sort of the principle behind it is that you know you've, you've got your heads full of you know 30 things that you should be doing at any you know or, and but the kind of the crux of it is saying what is the one thing that if I did that that would make that would make the biggest difference taking me towards where I want to be and so it's kind of thinking when you can't do everything and actually the books are saying you know we we see multitasking as like this it's it's seen as this good thing this sort of skill oh I'm really good at multitasking but you say actually it's it's bad it's not good to multitask if you look if you're doing five different things at once you're probably not doing any of them very well you know and you're just feeling flustered and actually principle is that it's much much better to focus on one thing that's really going to make a difference and get that done and then once that's done then you ask the question again now what is the one thing so I think taking that book was really good at sort of making me feel like actually busy and multitasking I was thinking that that's a good thing but it isn't and actually just focusing down and tackling one thing at a time and it, and it really does work it's much better much, I'll much. add it to the show notes. I'm sure it'll be really useful for lots of people. Yeah, it's um, you get it on audio book. I listened to it on audio book initially, um, but actually now I've bought the paper copy because it's because I like it. <laughs> oh, real. I've, and my um, audio book subscription um, changes today, and I'm literally desperate waiting for the payment to go through just so uh, I can download something else. I'm such a, such a geek. I love reading. Um, I so, what fun. advice would you give your teenage self? Um, <laughs> enjoy having a body that's not really saggy, right? <laughs> Probably. I know why. Why was I so paranoid about my body? I, I was so I thin. I know it's 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 a crime, isn't it? You kind of look back and think, ah, you think it, but no. Um, I think yeah, be be more respectful and considerate to your poor parents. I think oh, actually no. as well. Oh, no. Now I'm having like a. My son's about to become a teenager and is already demonstrating the hormonal. <laughs> yeah, the change is happening. The transformation is happening. I'm kind of like, and I'm thinking back to, you know, things that I said and did then to my parents. And I'm like, oh, God, they're thinking it's hilarious. They're sort of watching stuff that Jay's doing. And they're going, yeah, it's really annoying, isn't it, Anna? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. But no, I mean, I think just... Just don't, just get stuck into it. I don't know that I would really, just get stuck into whatever you want to get stuck into. You know, go for it, have adventures and don't be frightened of things. I think all the things that have been the scariest in my life have been the things that have been most worthwhile. So kind of don't, you know, the whole, well, the cliche, isn't it? Like, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. It's kind of the all the best things in life are the scariest things and um yeah I think just don't 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 be too scared just just yeah that's a bit really cheesy isn't it (laughs) it's true because again nobody teaches you this stuff Mm. people at school teach you to get on with things and actually getting on with something is not just a one single action for people we all learn and and action stuff in very different ways and need different mm-hmm. things so um i think if you can find out what's going to work for you that that is key to you know moving forward and, and not being scared and finally if people want to come and find out more or um uh, be shot by you not with a gun <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, that's take their photos um, and also find out about the mothership where should they go I'll add it all to the show notes as well oh, thank you um, yeah well if um, if it's uh, photography for a shoot um, my, they can visit my website which actually currently still has weddings on it although in a couple of weeks time it won't it's, I've not yet got around to updating that but um, yeah it's anahardy.co.uk is the website um, but I also have a Facebook page which is just Anna Hardy photo um, Anna Hardy photography um, so they can kind of get in contact or, or Instagram but mainly sort of email of uh, website um, and I can send them a brochure. So if they're interested at all, just drop the easiest things probably to so drop me an email 
all the details on the website and Facebook page and uh, I can send them a brochure which explains what I do and then with the mothership um, that is on the Guilty Mothers Club website which is guiltymothersclub.co.uk and there's a page on there that's membership and which has got all the details of the mothership and we've actually closed now we've taken intake every quarter so our first intake was in January um, so they're all sort of on board now and then we're opening the doors again at the start of April so but you can if you go onto the website there is um you can register you just pop your name and email in and that will pop you on the uh, mothership newsletter so we'll we can then send out we'll let you know when you know the doors are about to open again and any information that you need so um and we can and along with that you'd then get sent a brochure about it so yeah signing up to the newsletter really for the mothership and visiting Oh, excuse me, I'm my throat. Um, visiting the website or my Facebook page for photography. Amazing. Uh, but Thank yeah. you so much. I love chatting. I feel like we've tackled a lot today, <laughs> which has been great. So um, thank you. No, and no, thank um, you. yeah, all the all the uh, details will be in the show notes as usual. Thank you so oh, much, Anna. Well, thank Bye. you for having me. You're it's welcome. been a lot of chatting. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Nikki. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, feel free to rate, review and subscribe for all the brand new episodes. If you want to go deeper with my support, check out my freebies house and unlock the rooms you choose. NikkiRaby.com forward slash freebies house. I also have workshops, programs and one-on-one bespoke offerings. For prices, availability, or just to have a chat with me, go to NikkiRaby.com. Thank you, as always, for spending some time with me and my guests, and I'll see you next time.